Hello gold farmers, welcome to another Golden Rats farming video. Today we'll be taking a look at my favorite aquarium or farming route. The reason why this is my favorite one is mostly just because it was the first route I found and it actually inspired me to look for more and which I have found quite a few more. The route is actually in between the two caves that are located around the Hala or however that PvP city is pronounced. I no longer have the actual route but this one's actually pretty straightforward. So I do a few different things on this route that help me increase the amount of gold that I make. I was in a whack with Sharkin and somehow I had managed to receive 20k and that is with only uncommons being marked. That's not including all of the moats or adamantite or that I was able to pick up. And I was able to get a decent amount of green items. Some of them were the blood fist set pieces. I got, or I guess the most expensive piece I got was the glorious orax, which has an average market value of about 2.7k. I believe the largest train smog piece I got was the Blood Fist Leggings which sells for about 1.4k so they're not too expensive but they are transmog items and it's just a little extra gold that you can make as you go around and kill the mobs. You don't have to kill the muck spawns, but they do have a chance of dropping the moat of water, which I feel like the chances of getting moats have been increased for all of the elementals that I've killed in the Burning Crusade. It could just be me, but I watched a little bit of Sharkin's YouTube video, or not Sharkin's, uh, Stunton's YouTube video over his 24 hour stream and he went over all of his farms and one of them happened to be the Primal Shadow Farm and he had mentioned they had obtained 266 moats or primals in one hour which is pretty insane even in a group farm so I do feel like the drop chances for moats have been increased I do not kill all of the mobs that I see however when you enter the caves be sure you try to pay attention because there will always be two or spawns. That is unless if somebody else is farming as well. I have never ran out of nodes inside of the caves and there is one node on each side of the caves that will spawn and it, it's counted towards the spawns that you can get inside of the cave so if you find one outside and only find one node inside of the cave then that those are your two I'm not sure how wizard has these spawns set up for the ore but it's a lot different than what once to buy gold has been covering I do believe that they are on a force spawn from what I see. I could be wrong. I have 
had other people pick up ores in the other cave while I am in the opposite one and nodes would pop up a couple of seconds it wouldn't be right away but it was a lot quicker than what the actual route was for the route itself I basically just stay up alongside of one side of the cliffs I'll go inside the cave and then I will scale up along the other side of the cliff F as far as quarium goes I can usually get around 10 to 30 or per hour that was actually what really set me off with this route was the fact that there was a ton of quarium. How I came across this route, I don't know if other people know of it or use it or anything, but how I came across this route was I was farming for the reputation so I can get the mounts that you get from Hoa. And I just went back and forth between the two caves with my mining on and I was able to find quite a bit of ore. It took me a little bit to realize exactly what was happening but once I realized that there always seems to be ore up inside of these caves even though it takes about a minute or two to get across to the other side there was always some form of ore up another thing that I really liked about this was the amount of nether weave cloth that you can get I had covered a video the other day over how to maximize your profit off of nether weave cloth which if you haven't watched that and want to learn how you can make more gold off of nether weave cloth then be sure to check that one out this route actually yields me roughly 30 to 50k an hour and it also depends on what I do. Sometimes I will just go back and forth and mine. Sometimes I'll go back and forth and kill these elementals. Sometimes I don't worry about the elementals and just the ogres. It usually just depends on what my mood is, but for the most part it still seems to yield pretty close to the same. The biggest thing I like about this route is the only pressure profession that is really required is mining. The rest you can just go around and kill the enemies and make a little extra gold off of them. I believe that covers the majority of this route. I'm hoping I didn't forget anything because this is one of the routes that I've really been wanting to go over for quite some time I just didn't know when a good time was mostly because it's basically a instant respawn transmog farm on top of a pretty sick quarium ore farm as well I've got 10 quarium ore in my bag right now but I've got a total of 33 and I farmed the living daylights out of this place it's pretty fun quick and it's actually pretty relaxing in my opinion there's not a whole lot you really have to do and because no matter what you really do you yield around the same amount of gold you don't really have to try so hard so if you've got competition you can just easily kill 
the mobs as you wish. For moats, I've been able to pick up almost two stacks of the moat of earth, and I haven't actually seen any fell iron ore, so I believe that's because nobody is farming in Nagrand right now. So the more people that will actually pick up the fell iron nodes inside of Nagrian, the more you will find up along the side of the cliffs, but I'm pretty sure there isn't any one right now, and I haven't found a fell iron ore spawn for quite some time. What I usually do with my fell iron ore though, is I will turn it into the fell bar, which is used in transmog items. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that right now, but it is a pretty good alternative than just selling the raw fell iron and internium ore. Looks like I was able to pick up another decent transmog piece, which is the Blood Knight breastplate, and it sells for almost 3k. I believe that will be all for this video. I hope you guys check it out, and I hope someone likes it as much as I do. This is definitely my go-to farm when I need some materials. Don't forget to check out my Adam and Tite or Shuffle as well. I will try to leave those links in the description below. Look forward to the Fell Iron or Shuffle and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content.